Hi. This is MSIH 61 MP21 B3 motherboard. MSI motherboards also have a system model, SM, and this motherboard's SM is MS7680 VR 3.2. So first I check the motherboard with my naked eyes to see if there is water spillage or if it has been heated before. I saw that this part is heated. I guess these MOSFETs are probably checked by another repairman before. And it is obvious that this BIOS IC is heated as well. And it is probably programmed by another repairman before. I don't have much to do with these problems yet. To check what the problem of this motherboard is. I use an LED and a power on off switch. You can get a power switch like this from a scrap computer case. I got this from a scrap PC case. There is a jack on every motherboard. It is called front panel jack. You can place this switch on it and turn on the motherboard easily. I place the power switch on front panel jack. For power switch, it does not matter which end, positive or negative, is connected to which end, positive or negative, on the motherboard. Its task is to just connect and disconnect the power. And here is an LED I got it from scrap motherboard as well. LED ends are important. Its positive end needs to connect to positive end on the motherboard and its negative to negative end. I plug in the LED as well. I use a buzzer as well. Buzzer helps you a lot in troubleshooting. I place it on the next front panel jack. Every motherboard's front panel jack is different. Some of them are split and some are not split. This motherboard has a buzzer itself. Instead of placing a second buzzer, I could just use motherboard's own buzzer. I placed a second buzzer anyways because it is my routine. So. The first voltage that is present on the motherboard is the voltage provided for motherboard by this battery. Usually it is A plus 3 volts, which enters PCH and a part of I.O. and drives a part of this PCH block. I'll check the voltage on the motherboard and show it to you. Yes, around 2.9 volts is present. One important thing about most motherboards is that CMOS settings on the motherboard may have problems. In such situation, the first thing I need to do is to remove the battery from motherboard. There is usually a clear CMOS jack. To clear CMOS, I connect the pins of clear CMOS jack to each other or I can connect positive and negative end of the battery to each other. There is a 32K crystal in here. Some repairmen connect the pins of the crystal to each other so that the problem of the device which does not turn on or the device which do not have display would be solved by clearing the CMOS. I cleared the CMOS. I place the battery now. The battery provides voltage of a part of PCH as well as voltage of this crystal. Let me show the voltages on the pins of this crystal. Around 230 milliamperes is present on this pin. And 377 milliamperes is present on the other pin. So this shows that voltage is present on the crystal. And most probably its clock is working. Let me show you the clock. Yes. As you see if I press the auto button, around 32 kilohertz, crystal frequency is 32.770 kilohertz. 
It's in fact 32.768. This shows that crystal is working normally. So no power is connected to motherboard yet. Voltage is present on crystal pins. And its clock is working. Before I connect power supply to motherboard and switch it on. Let me give you some info about power supply functions. There are wires with different colors on ATX jack of power supply. The purple wire has plus 5 VSB. As soon as I switch on power supply switch, plus 5 VSB would enter motherboard through the purple wire. Another one is the green wire, which is PSON signal. And through this signal, power supply detects if it needs to switch on fully or not. For example, if I connect this green wire, plus 5 volts, to the GND, power supply will be switched on. When power supply switches on, power good voltage, the gray wire, would increase to plus 5 volts. Let me check and show the voltages. First I check voltage of purple wire. Plus 5 VSB is present. The same voltage, plus 5 VSB, is present on the green wire as well, which is the PSON. Yes. And no voltage is present on the gray wire right now. Yes. As soon as I switch on power supply, power good voltage on the gray wire would enter the motherboard from power supply. I switch on power supply. Yes, plus 5 volts is present on the gray wire now. Plus 3 volts, plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts would enter motherboard through power supply. So you learned about power supply functions. I'll continue troubleshooting of the motherboard now. By switching on the power supply switch, plus 5 VSB enters motherboard through purple wire. And after passing a regulator IC, the regulator generates plus 3 VSB. Those voltages enter PCH and IO. First, IO gets reset. When IO is reset, it sends RSMRST signal to PCH. And it resets PCH. Motherboard is ready. When I switch on, IO detects that power is switched on and it sends power button signal to PCH. In response to I.O., PCH transfers SLPS4 and SLPS3 signals to I.O. And when I.O. receives SLPS3, it decreases PSON voltage to zero, and plus 5 volts of the green wire drops to zero. And motherboard turns on. So this is how the motherboard turns on. As this motherboard is damaged. When I switched on the board, it turned on for a second and turned off again. Because settings are saved on CMOS. I should switch the power off. And reset BIOS settings. As I told you in the beginning of the video. I reset BIOS in this way. OR by constant clicking of the power switch button. I place the battery. I switch on power supply again. As you saw, motherboard turned on for a second and then turned off again. As I told you in previous videos, this shows a short circuit in the motherboard. So let's check the power block of the motherboard on the board view. At first, plus 5 VSB enters motherboard through ATX jack. And along with plus 5 VSB, Power supply on PSON enters motherboard I.O. as well. I.O. can control the power supply and turn it on or off. I'll check plus 5 VSB on ATX jack. It enters different blocks. It enters this MOSFET Q23 in here, which is a double MOSFET. It is made up of AP channel and an N channel MOSFETs. It has two inputs and one output. The drain pins of these two MOSFETs are connected to each other. Output can be either of these inputs. 
I explained about this type of MOSFET in previous videos. Here, two MOSFETs are placed in one IC. The upper MOSFET is a P-channel MOSFET, which transfers plus 5 VSB to the system. And the lower MOSFET is an N-channel MOSFET, which transfers plus 5 volt switch, VCC5, to the motherboard. To control which one of these plus 5 volts should enter system, their gates need to be controlled. Their gate is controlled by an IC U19 in here. When the system is on sleep mode, switch voltages get disconnected, and this IC U19 leads gate of this MOSFET Q23, and that causes plus 5 VSB to enter 5 VDIMM RAM VCC and that causes plus 5 VSB to enter 5 VDIMM, RAM VCC. And when I switch on the system, this controller IC U19 leads gate of lower MOSFET, which is an N-channel MOSFET. And this key gets closed, connected, and plus 5 volt switch, VCC5, will be present in here. Plus 5 volt switch enters PWM of RAM VCC after passing choke inductor. And 1.5 volts of RAM VCC would be present on this choke inductor. 1.5 volts of RAM VCC is generated by this PWM U14 in here, as well as by these two N channel MOSFETs. I explained how to test these MOSFETs in previous videos, but I'll show you how to test them again on the motherboard. The next sub voltage is VTT DDR, which is generated from 1.5 volts of RAM VCC. The next sub voltage is VTT DDR, which is generated from 1.5 volts of RAM VCC, which generates half of 1.5 volts of RAM VCC by the help of a regulator, which is generated in switched mode. Pin 1 is its input, pin 4 is output of regulator. This voltage is present on pins 120 and 240 of RAM slot. Although voltage would be in switched mode, so RAM VCC is in this block. You are familiar with this block now. RAM VCC has another voltage as well which is plus 3 volts. That is the plus 3 volts of switch. I'll check that later, if RAM had a problem. I don't have much to do with this block for now. I was checking, to which blocks plus 5 VSB enters. This is RAM VCC block which is checked completely. In the next block, plus 5 VSB enters another MOSFET, which is AP channel MOSFET, Q28. The IC number is written in here. I know it's AP channel MOSFET by looking at the IC number. Gate of this MOSFET, Q28, is controlled by I.O and it can connect or disconnect plus 5 VSB. If motherboard faces a problem, I.O. can disconnect plus 5 VSB by sending a signal to the gate of this MOSFET, Q28. So let's see where plus 5 VSB enters. As you see, plus 5 VSB enters this regulator, U40. UP7706 regulator. Plus 3 VSB would be present on output of this regulator. I need to test input and output of this regulator, as well as test the input and output pins to each other, to see if the regulator is shorted or not. So, after I tested this block, plus 5 VSB enters another double MOSFET here. It is similar to the double MOSFET above. It is made up of two P-channel and N-channel MOSFETs. Drains of the two MOSFETs are connected to each other. And plus 5 volts of USB is present on its output. And in here, to be able to control which one of MOSFETs to be connected, meaning, which of these keys to be closed, connected, you need to control them through their gate pins. The gate pin of these MOSFETs are controlled directly by I.O. Although in here, plus 12 volt switch enters MOSFET Q27 directly. In case I.O. wanted to protect the circuit, and there was a short circuit, 
gate pin of MOSFET gets leaded by this transistor Q70 and its gate and also by I.O. Its drain connects to its source, which is the GND, and voltage drops and MOSFET gets disconnected. In the next step, I check switch voltages. The first switch voltage to be checked is plus 3 volt switch. It enters different blocks, such as PCH, IO, PCI slots, PCI Express and RAM slot. 1.8 volt CPU is provided by plus 3 volt switch, which is generated by a MOSFET and an op amp. Let me show the datasheet of op amp. It is a dual op amp. I use this section. Pins 1, 2, and 3 are used. Pin 2 is source pin of MOSFET. Pin 3 is fixed on 1.8 volts. And pin 1 is gate pin of MOSFET. Let me explain these on the board view. MOSFET output, source pin, enters pin 2 and gets compared with pin 3, which is 1.8 volts. If MOSFET output voltage is lower than 1.8 volts, output will be high. Gate of MOSFET Q60 gets leaded, and voltage enters to source through drain, and gets stabilized on this capacitor, EC37, as long as this voltage is lower than 1.8 volts. The voltage will be present on this capacitor. If this voltage is higher than 1.8 volts, it gets compared with pin 3 in here. As a result output gets low. Gate voltage will be low and MOSFET will be disconnected. And voltage of this capacitor will be lowered over time. And with constant connection and disconnection, 1.8 volts would be fixed on EC37 capacitor. So I have checked this sub voltage as well. The next main voltage that I'll check is plus 5 volt switch. Plus 5 volt switch enters RAM VCC Q23, which I checked fully. And in here, it enters USB VCC Q27. I explained all these when checking plus 5 VSB. I can check ohm of this JPWR1 right here and make sure normal ohm appears. Next main voltage to be checked is plus 12 volt switch, which enters PCI Express slots. Also enters CPU fan in here. And most importantly, 1.05 volts PCH VCC gets generated from plus 12 volt switch. 1.05 volts PCH VCC gets generated from plus 12 volt switch, which 1.05 volts is generated by MOSFET and PWM. You see the PWM in here. So, now I need to check voltage on ATX Jack Power 2, JPWR2, which is CPU VCC voltage. Here are different voltages. I can check them one by one on these chokes. For example, I have CPU GFX core on this choke, which is generated by this PWM and its MOSFETs. I can check these MOSFETs one by one and make sure that they are okay. I can check their ohm on this choke and make sure that normal ohm appears. The next voltage is CPU core voltage, VCCP. One of its phases is generated by this PWM, U4, and these MOSFETs. And its other phases are generated by PWM, U1, and its MOSFETs. I can check these low MOSFETs and PWM, U1, itself by performing ohm check on this choke and check high MOSFET separately. I have checked PWM so many times. Next voltage to be checked is on choke 10. It is CPU VTT voltage. CPU VTT is generated by this PWM, U29, and its MOSFETs. I can check this very easily. The next sub voltage to be checked is generated by this MOSFET Q39 and this op amp U33. 
which is CPU underscore saw voltage. It uses the second phase of this op amp U33. Pins 5 and 6 are compared with each other, and pin 7, op amp output, controls gate of this MOSFET Q39. And pin 7, op amp output, controls gate of this MOSFET Q39. This is the same as 1.8 volts of CPU. And they do not differ much with each other. I want to check power block of motherboard. I removed CPU. First I check ATX jack. Plus 3 volt switch is present there. Around 20 ohm appears on this way. If high ohm appears on one way, you don't need to perform ohm check on the other way. Good ohm appears on plus 5 volt switch as well. Good ohm appears on plus 12 volt switch as well. High ohm also appears on plus 5 VSB. If ohm does not appear on one way, I need to perform ohm check on the other way to make sure that there is no disconnection or short circuit. By performing ohm check on the other way, and if ohm appears there, you can make sure that there is no disconnection. As you see, good ohm appears here, and there is no disconnection or short circuit. Here I perform ohm check on minus 12 volts. Usually ohm does not appear on minus 12 volts. I can perform ohm check on both ways of minus 12 volts. Yes. Power supply on PSON signal is not shorted. And it is not disconnected as well. I check ohm of PWR OK signal. This is OK as well. Plus 12 volt CPU is left to be checked. Yes. This is OK. PWMs and MOSFETs that generate the voltage of sub voltages are left to be checked. So I start from the top. This double MOSFET generates plus 5 volts RAM VCC. It comes from two directions. I explained them before. High ohm needs to appear on this way on P channel MOSFET. And low ohm on the other way. Yes. Lower MOSFET is an N channel 1. Low ohm appears on this way. High ohm on the other way. This shows that MOSFET is not shorted or disconnected. Here I have PWM of 1.5 volts of RAM VCC. Drain of this MOSFET is connected on this choke. I can perform ohm check on drain to GND. And make sure consumer, PWM and low MOSFET are OK. And make sure consumer, PWM and low MOSFET are OK. So let me perform ohm check in here. Good ohm appears. I perform ohm check on the other way. Low ohm needs to appear here, yes. So this shows that low MOSFET, 1.5 volts consumer, and PWM don't have problems. Only the high MOSFET is left to be checked. High MOSFET is an N channel 1. Let me check that as well. Low ohm appears on one way. And high ohm appears on the other way. So, high MOSFET is okay as well. 1.5 volts of RAM VCC is OK. VTTDDR generator regulator is left to be checked. Its pin 1 is input of 1.5 volts. I already performed ohm check on it. It is OK on this way. I perform ohm check on its pin 4 output. It is OK too. I perform ohm check on both ways. I need to perform ohm check on input to output to make sure there is no short circuit inside. Good ohm appears here as well. I checked RAM VCC block. Here I have a MOSFET which connects and disconnects plus 5 VSB by I.O. Let me check this MOSFET, which is AP channel 1. High ohm appears on this way and low ohm needs to appear on drain to source because it's AP channel MOSFET, so this MOSFET is OK too. Here is 1.05 volts PWM of PCH. I can perform ohm check on drain of low MOSFET or on this choke with GND. Make sure of the health of consumer, low MOSFET, and PWM. 7 to 8 ohm is good on this way. Different ohm needs to appear on the other way. 
Yes, 3 ohm on one way and 7 to 8 ohm on the other way. This is normal too. Only the high MOSFET is left to be checked which all check separately. High ohm appears on this way. It's an N-channel MOSFET so low ohm needs to appear on source to drain. Ohm is normal here. So I couldn't find any short circuit up until now. Now I need to perform ohm check on plus 3 VSB regulator. I perform ohm check on its input, plus 5 VSB, on this pin. Around 13 ohm appears. This pin is output. 13 ohm appears on output. As input to output values are similar, it is possible that there is a short circuit inside. I perform ohm check on input to output. In analog multimeters, ohms lower than 3 ohm is suspicious of short circuit. That's why I perform ohm check on the other way as well. This regulator is most probably shorted. I need to remove it and check again. There is another double MOSFET in this block, which is similar to double MOSFET of RAM VCC. This one is double MOSFET of USB VCC. I perform ohm check on this one too. The upper MOSFET is AP channel MOSFET. On this way, because it's AP channel MOSFET, low ohm appears on drain to source. High ohm needs to appear on the other way. Yes. This one is an N channel MOSFET. Low ohm appears on source to drain. High ohm needs to appear on the other way. Yes. Only the regulator has a problem so far. Now CPU VCC is left to be checked. CPU VCC is made up of many PWMs and MOSFETs. I perform ohm check on them one by one. First I check 1.8 volts of CPU. For which I need to check this MOSFET first. Low ohm needs to appear on source to drain on one way, and high ohm on the other way. Yes. This shows that this MOSFET is most probably neither shorted nor disconnected. And here I have op amp to check. Pins 1, 2, 3, 5 and 6 needs to be ohm checked to the GND. To see if they are shorted or not. Yes, good ohm. I check pins 5 and 6 to each other and 1, 2, 3 to each other. To see if they are internally shorted to each other or not. This op amp is okay. Let's perform ohm check on this block. First I perform ohm check on GFX core to GND on drain pin of low MOSFET. First I perform ohm check on GFX core to GND on drain pin of low MOSFET. Just like RAM block. I make sure of the health of consumer, PWM, and low MOSFET. So I perform ohm check. Yes, good ohm appears. Okay, there is no need to perform ohm check on the other way. Only high MOSFET is left to be checked. For which, high ohm needs to appear on this way. And low ohm on the other way. Yes. The next PWM is VCore, VCCP. I perform ohm check on it now. Good ohm appears on low MOSFET to GND. Low ohm needs to appear on high MOSFET to the pins on this way. Higher ohm needs to appear on the other way. Everything is okay here. I can check V core in here. But since I checked V core and they are parallel, there is a low chance that there is problem in here. But I'll check again. I perform ohm check on drain of low MOSFET to GND. Good ohm appears, and I perform ohm check on high MOSFET from both ways. Low ohm appears on this way, and higher ohm appears on the other way, drain to source. This is the high MOSFET of the other choke. Yes. High ohm appears on this way and low ohm on the other way. These are all normal. Here I have another choke, let me check that too. Good ohm appears here too. 
Let me check the last joke. Good Om appears on this way of this MOSFET. Yes. This is normal too. Let me check its high MOSFET. There is no short circuit here and it's not disconnected. One MOSFET is left to be checked which provides the CPU SRVCC using this op amp. I already checked op amp. I only need to check this MOSFET. It is an N-channel MOSFET. Low ohm needs to appear on source to drain on this way. Higher ohm needs to appear on the other way. Yes. I checked this motherboard's power block. Only plus 3 VSB has problem. I need to change this regulator, and the problem of this motherboard will most probably be solved by changing this regulator. To make sure that input to output is not shorted. I check this with digital multimeter. I perform ohm check on input to output pin. Zero ohm appears. Now I'm sure that input to output is shorted. There is a MOSFET inside this regulator IC. That MOSFET is probably shorted internally. So I change the regulator IC and see if motherboard problem gets solved or not. I want to change the burned regulator IC now. I got a similar regulator IC from a scrap motherboard you can see it here. I got a similar regulator IC from a scrap motherboard you can see it here. Mine was UP7706. This is UP0104P. I check them on datasheet they match each other. And they don't differ much. So I remove regulator IC from the mainboard. Make sure you cover the surrounding components with heat resistant tape. So they won't get damaged or burned. And after removing regulator IC. Make sure to check and see if the short circuit is solved or not. Make sure to check and see if the short circuit is solved or not. I removed the regulator IC. I put it away. I perform ohm check on input to output. It was shorted before. Now there is no short circuit on the motherboard. I'll check the regulator IC as well. I need to perform ohm check on pin 3 to pin 6. Those are the input and output pins. As you see, regulator IC is shorted from inside. There is a MOSFET inside the regulator IC. And that MOSFET is most probably burned. Pay attention to the direction of this regulator IC. Place the pin 1 of the IC on the marked place on motherboard. When placing the regulator IC, if pins were not tinned enough, apply tin on them again using soldering iron and flux. Be sure to clear the flux from motherboard afterwards. I place the IC here. I check standby voltages on the motherboard. There is plus 5 VSB on this way. And plus 3 VSB on the other way. So I placed CPU and RAM on the motherboard. I connected VGA cable. I switch on the motherboard. As you see, we have the display. Most motherboard problems are related to power block. If you professionally learn about motherboard power block, you can easily repair most motherboards. Hope this video was useful winking face. Produced by dr-bios.com